My sweet goats, a couple months ago, I uploaded a video called Video Games Are My Safe Space. And if you haven't seen it already, I highly recommend you do because it is one of the best videos I've uploaded to date. It is a video that'll tell you a lot about who I am as a person, why I love video games so much, and I also spent some time talking about mental health in their relation with video games and how I feel like video games have essentially helped gamers overcome issues in their life that they would not have been able to otherwise. More importantly, the comment section of the video is loaded with examples of people utilizing video games to benefit their lives. So feel free, honestly, to go ahead and give this video of viewing whenever you get the chance. Now, the reason why I'm bringing up this video today is because I wanna talk about mental health in games from a more developmental aspect. And in order to do that, I'm gonna be bringing up a Kotaku interview. Now, I know people aren't crazy about Kotaku. They, t Kotaku tends to talk a lot of shit about gamers, okay? I get that, all right? It, it's, it, it can be a little bit upsetting, but every now and then, they have some good stuff. And, and this is one of the good things. This is an interview that they had with someone from NetherRealm Studios regarding their development process on Mortal Kombat 11. And the headline of this interview is, I'd have these extremely graphic dreams, what it's like to work on ultra-violent games like Mortal Kombat 11. Now, any reactionary would see that headline and think, they're gonna go ahead and take my video games away from me. They're gonna take the violence out of games. That's not the case. That's not what they're trying to talk about here. What they're doing is they're trying to talk about what effect these violent video games have on the people who have to spend hours upon hours upon hours every day for the a, a, a good part of a year, a good part of a development cycle, however long that takes, to, to essentially create these games that we consume so quickly. So the article starts with them pretty much highlighting the fact that Mortal Kombat is a very brutal game and that's what people come to it for. But that the violence that we experience is actually happening in such a short frame of time compared to the overall fight and that this violence actually ends up being a lot more impactful for the people who are developing it because they have to go ahead and develop these 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 insane fatalities and brutalities and, and insane murder fests frame by frame. And just to pack that in, I'm gonna go ahead and read this part of the interview which says, the people who make Mortal Kombat live with the series' over-the-top violence for much longer than players do. Game development is slow and tedious and a few frames depicting a man's face being removed in photorealistic detail can be the result of days and weeks of careful work and research. I believe that. The work might take a toll, one that's worth examining as the stories of what it's like to make the biggest, most popular games continue to come to light. Now that last sentence right there is a bit of a, a, a callback to a lot of the stuff that people are beginning to realize about video games. Crunch, you know, I mean, Red Dead Redemption 2, how much crunch did that require? Fortnite, people working hundreds of hours just to keep that game going. You know, there's this all sorts of stuff that are coming out about the games industry that people didn't know before, that consumers didn't know before, that's really interesting to know and needs to be looked at. So this article uh, takes the perspective of one developer from NetherRealm Studios and that developer went unnamed because they don't want to go ahead and screw up their employment prospects. And they specifically mentioned one thing that I found to be really interesting. They say, you'd walk around the office and one guy would be watching hangings on YouTube. Another guy would be looking at pictures of murder victims. Someone else would be watching a video of a cow being slaughtered, they said. The scary part was always the point at which new people on the project got used to it. And I definitely hit that point. What they were talking about was how desensitized they got to the violence, which I can understand is gonna happen. Now, the interesting thing, if a little bit further up, is, uh, is that they, the, this developer actually uh, eventually saw a therapist because they felt like they were having a lot of nightmares, a lot of dreams that contained the violence that they were working on. And the, the, the therapist diagnosed them with PTSD and, uh, and, uh, and that they attributed this work to Mortal Kombat 11, which is, uh, which is, which is really, really, really interesting to, to kind of see happen. I don't know how many developers would have this. I don't know if this this developer is a uh, is a just the vocal minority of the bunch, but it is worth considering. It really is. It's also understandable that they would have to put a ton of research into making the game the way that it is. Uh, and, and you can see the art director over here. He has a comment on it. He says we do a lot of testing of like how liquid will land on carpet, how it'll react on dirt. He said, and we do tests and talk about them like. Does that look how you think it would look? If I get blood on my shirt, it's gonna get dark, so it needs to react appropriately. Our tech artists dig into that and make it look very real. So, I mean, in order to make all that happen, you kind of do have to immerse yourself in this level of detail, which involves, you know, seeing things that you may not necessarily want to see on the day-to-day -day basis. The article also touches upon why violence in video games is so appealing, and they actually reference a game director named Alex Hutchinson, who I've never really heard of, uh, but uh, apparently has uh, worked on stuff like Spore 
and Far Cry 4. He says, you have a clear goal. It's exciting because there's a risk reward. You win, they die. You lose, you die. So you're afraid and you can lose things. It's usually spectacular because you're shooting a gun or swinging swords. You get great feedback. I can't help but agree with that, that line of thinking because that is essentially what I appreciate about violence in video games is that if I don't do well, I'm going to die and often die in a very gruesome way or, or die in such a way that's going to reset a major amount of my progress, which is why I love Souls-like games. It's just interesting to kind of view violence in video games in this way. The article also talks about how onlookers of video games, like viewers, people who don't actually game, will view violence in video games. When people are actually playing the game, the violence has some kind of meaning. It's not as gratuitous as you would think it is just by watching it. So that's also something I never really kind of thought about before when playing violent video games. I never thought about what people or how people are watching it or how they see it. I've always, I've always been personally involved and therefore have always had a personal perspective on it. Hutchinson also has this to say in terms of how uh, violence in video games would affect people. Uh, I think as realism improves, it's more of a danger. The fatality of the assets you deal with and the world you're building is more likely. We had some friends out here working on Outlast. I don't think he was upset, but the character artist was joking that he spent a lot of time modeling dead babies and it wasn't his favorite moment, you know? Imagine being a dad that either works as an animator or works as an artist at a video game company and you have to model dead babies. I have a teeny, 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 tiny feeling that that would probably affect you to some degree. The animator that they were interviewing goes on to say Mortal Kombat is, it's, it's Mortal Kombat. And uh, you start to feel like an idiot for thinking about what the impact of working on that game has been on yourself. Other people I've talked to have been like, I know what I'm working on. I know what I've gotten myself into here. And you start to blame yourself for being shitty or weak or spineless. And I can imagine that being a really, really hard thing to deal with. But you know, at the end of the day, like people shouldn't be afraid of the emotions that they're feeling. Like if something makes you feel sick, you should talk about how it makes you feel sick so that you can process it out loud and overcome whatever it is, is causing you to make you feel the way that it does. The article then goes on to talk about how there's a sense of detachment between the people who have been creating these animations and the people who are there to just simply review the animations and see that they actually look good and, and feel good or, 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 or whatnot. And this just goes to show how big the development of a video game is. You have people who are removed from the actual developmental process of it or who are on the more uh, creative directional aspect of it uh, uh, who are just there to kind of see like if everything is going okay and they don't really kind of consider the amount of work sometimes or the, the mental toll is taken on the team. I, I feel like this is something that, that, that people should be a little bit more aware of. So when creating games like this, when creating any kind of game, honestly, is to kind of check in with your team, be like, hey, by the way, how does this make you feel? Are you feeling good? Everything good? How can I help? I think that's ultimately something that developers uh, are gonna need to start doing. And to close off the article and to also support this idea of developers checking in with each other, uh, this uh, animator goes on to say, we've talked a lot about how the end product isn't so damaging as people make it out to be, and I tend to agree with that. But I think the process of making these things can be harmful for people. It can cause them to burn out or lose a sense of self sometimes. I would hope that something, at least that developers can do with their coworkers is just start talking to each other about these things. If we're not solving things, at least having supportive people around, I think is really crucial. I think that makes perfect sense. What do you guys think? Do you feel like developers need a support system, need something that's in place for them to go ahead and air their grievances in a way that's healthy and productive and allows them to confront the very issues that they're dealing with in a safe, positive manner? Do you feel like that is something that needs to be done Feel free to let me know in the comments below. Look, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to go ahead and leave a like, hit the sub button, and of course, ding that bell icon. Absolutely ding that bell icon. Otherwise, YouTube won't even let you know I'm around, okay? So go ahead and do that. Of course, if you want to see me on a more regular basis, feel free to go ahead and check me out on twitch.tv slash MrBuntyKing, where you get to see me live playing video games, talking to the chat. It's a really great way of talking to me, getting to know me, and getting to know how how good of a f***ing gamer I am. Until next time, I love you.